Hello, everybody. Welcome to Simple Stories Live. Happy Friday. I hope that you have some really fun plans headed into this last weekend of February. It's so great to be with you and to do a little crafting today. Today, we're going to be working with the Good Stuff Page Kit. I love our page kits. These are a lot of fun. Hopefully, you've seen them before, but if not, hope, um, we'll tell you all about them. And if you've got one in your stash right now, maybe you can craft along with us. These are available at retailers now, and they're a lot of fun to use. They're great for scrapbookers who are new. They're great for scrapbookers who want to, um, you know, get some stuff done. Maybe you have a big stack of photos and you just want to get through some things to, you know, get through a stack of photos. I see that we have some people out there. I want to say hello to a few of you. Um, give me one second to switch over. Let's see. We've got Teresa. How are you? Oh, yes. We love this paper line. She says she's planning on making a mini album out of it. That would be so cute. I love it. Hello, Penny. Great to see you. We're glad to have you on today. Yvonne, happy Friday to you. Thank you so much. We see Clean and Simple Crafts from North Carolina. Hello, Geraldine from California. And um, it's so great. I Oh my gosh, I can't even keep up with all you guys. Thank you so much for being here. We are, this is our last uh, live for the good stuff because all of our spring collections are starting to ship to stores next week. So within the next week or two, you will start seeing our full bloom, our um, indigo garden and our boho baby arriving in stores. So next week we're going to start some projects with that. So be sure to come back next week on, I think it's March 5th, March 4th at 2 p.m. Um, how is my sound doing? Am I having a big uh, echo at all? I hear a little bit of an echo and I want to fix that if it's bothering you. Hopefully it's not. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I want to show you this page kit and I'll watch your uh, comments to see if we have an audio issue. Hi, Andrea. So great to see you. I see Lisa. I see Tamara. I see Marcia or Marcia. I'm not sure how to say that. Hopefully I'm not saying it wrong, but it's so great to have you here. Becky's here too. She says the audio sounds great. Perfect. Okay. So here is our good stuff page kit. Now these are what these are. They look like they're in a little collection kit pack, but they have everything you need to create two double page layouts. Outs. Of course, you could split these apart into four single pages if you want, but they um, co definitely coordinate together. So if you like to have your pages matching in your book, the ones that are going side by side, you can do that or you can split them apart. Now they come with everything you need. You literally just need to add your adhesive and your photos. It's awesome. So there's four base pages that are a nice thick cardstock. Then you get three 12 by 12 die cut sheets of all these fun layers that pop out and um, go on these pages. And then you get a six by 12 chipboard sheet. So you get a little bit of dimension. Now this coordinates with the Good Stuff collection, of course. So if you wanna add in lots of more goodies like brads or enamel dots from that collection, they'll coordinate perfectly. So it comes with full color instructions and it will take you through each side of the page. On the top of the instructions, it will tell you what size photos you need. So you can print or edit and um, chop those down to whatever sizes you need and then you can just rock and roll. These are so much fun to take to crops because all of the thought, all of the thinking is done for you. So you can sit there and visit with your friends and just have fun putting this together. Now I do want to point out also that on the steps you will see that each or each step has a bolded item. That is the piece that you are adding in that step. So it makes it really easy to find if you're just glancing and going down really quickly. I know some people just like to look at the photo and roll along and or you can just kind of watch for those bolded items and do it that way. So here is the six by 12 sheet. It is a thinner chipboard and we did that on purpose because some people don't like a lot of bulk. That way it gives you a little bit of dimension but you can always pop these up with foam tape or um, you know your glue dots, things like that if you wanna make it a little bit thicker. Here are the, um, the die cut sheets and these are really lightly die cut so that you can just go ahead and start pulling them apart. Now, some people like to pull apart all of the pieces first, and I'm, I'm kind of a mixed camp because I like to have my pieces ready to go, but at the same time, I don't want to look through 40 pieces, and um, so sometimes I leave them in the sheets so that I can just look through three sheets as opposed to um, you know, 40 pieces or whatever, however many pieces are in this kit. So um, it looks like that might need a there we go. I thought it might need a little help with scissors, but you can see they pop out really easily. 
Now there are little connecting nodes on the sides, but we, we asked for a really light perforation on that. So there's not a ton of them. However, if it bothers you to see that, you can ink the edges and that will hide it. Or you can just take a nail file or scissors and just lightly scrape along that edge and it will get rid of that super easy. It just takes a second if you don't like that. So here's a look at the layers that we have in here. Lots of fun photo mats. We even have some bonus pieces. So that's another reason why I say, you know what, you may want to just punch out the major pieces and then leave all of the um, small die cuts in there. That's because some of them don't go into the design. They're just added in to fill in space so that you get a ba nice bang for your buck. So you can choose to approach it either way. I will probably just punch out my major pieces and then leave all of these the smaller ones in there so that I can find them um, a little bit easier. So then we've got our base pages. So you can see that the base pages are really nice and thick. I'm gonna flick it for you, hopefully you can hear, I'm trying to put it by my microphone, that that is a nice thick weight um, card stock. So it's, it's not, it's gonna, it has some nice, um, it's a good base for you. There's also some pre-printed layers on here. Now the reason there's some pre-printed layers on here is because in order to keep the costs of the kit consistent across all of the kits, we had to keep the formula um, the same. So, you know, four base sheets, three die cut sheets, one six by 12. However, we wanted to add in some pattern papers here and there. So some of those layers are pre-printed on there. However, we make a really conscientious effort to make sure that those base pages are a nice general design that will work with any type of photo. So if you decide to switch up the design, you still have this nice base that you can that use with anything basically. Plus it will be, it's great for stitching through cause you don't have all these stacked layers. So you can run this through your stitch, you know, your sewing machine without too much problems. And we like, we love it for that reason as well. So there's a look at those two base pages. And then these two base pages, are a very they would be great for single pages but they are the same with just a few different pattern changes so that if you want them side by side or the photos to work together it coordinates great so we're going to put together these two pages today and i love that we have these nice big pictures on the front of the package i can kind of use this like a puzzle box you know as i'm putting together my um, layout, I can look over at this and see where the pieces go. However, on my instructions, I have the photos as well, a nice big photo. So either way that works for you. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start with this first layout with these two base pages here. And so I'm going to set some of these other pieces aside. So how is everyone? Are you crafting along with me today? Let me take a look at the comments and see. We've got, um, Oh, Tamara's saying that she loves that they come apart easily. Yes, they really, really do. You're not going to struggle with them. Oh, hello. We've got Stampin'. Um, I don't know how to say that. Uh, I will butcher it. So hello from the Netherlands. Great to see you. And then we have Rena. She says, how do you obtain the scrapbook and how do the pages come in the kits? Oh, okay. We get this question sometimes. So they are a 12 by 12 uh, paper. And so if you're new to scrapbooking, you may be like, well, where am I going to find 12 by 12 albums or page protectors? You can find those at scrapbook stores or on online scrapbook stores. So the 12 by 12 area is really great because it gives you lots of room for more, more photos and journaling and things like that. However, don't be afraid to cut this down to eight and a half by 11. If you can't find a 12 by 12, um, you know, scrapbook in your area, you can modify the design to work for you. This can be just a great base or a great starter for you. Um, but you will, you can find the 12 by 12 albums and the 12 by 12 uh, sheet protectors, uh, or they're sometimes called pocket pages or page pockets in store online stores if you do not have a, a retailer near you that carries those. So um, look for those. Sometimes chain stores have them as well. So your chain craft stores. So look for those there as well. It's a pretty common size. The scrapbook industry actually started out with an eight and a half by 11 format, but then they changed to a 12 by 12 format. So it's, it's pretty common throughout um, the crafting world. And I think if you look, you should have no problem finding those. 
Okay. Oh, Carla, thank you. Carla saying that these are fabulous. Mary loves that flamingo pink color. Yes, I do too, for sure. It's so happy and bright and just that pretty, pretty pink. We got that pretty blush pink in there too. So if you are a pink fan, you are going to love this. Okay. So I've got my biggest pieces punched out. I might as well do these little strips here as well. And then we're just going to get going. Um, this what I love about these is that they're so quick and easy to do. And, you know, I have fun scrapbooking. Like I really do. Like I enjoy the process, but I'll admit sometimes I, I have photos that I want to get the story scrapbooked, but I'm more inspired by the story than I am the photos. You know, sometimes they're kind of not really pretty photos, if that makes sense. Like you, I could, the, the instance I can think of is kind of this instance I'm thinking today is a birthday party. So my daughter's friends threw her a surprise birthday party and the photos are cute. You know, they are, but there's a lot of people in them. And so it's, it's not like the, you're zoomed in on one particular, um, you know, uh, focal point. And so they're kind of just busy. And so they're not as inspiring, I guess, <laughs> you know, like sometimes you have a really cute portrait and that just inspires you to match the person's outfit. But sometimes you don't, you don't, you're more focused on the story. And so that is what I'm doing today. And that's, that's why the page kits come in handy is because the designs thought out, all the colors are picked out and I can just get my story in there, get my photos in there and just have fun. Just have fun. Okay. So yes, all the instructions are included in the kit. No, you're fine. So the instructions are in the kit. They come right along with it. Thank you, Becky, for answering that as well. And so they're right in there. And if yours happens to not come with instructions for whatever reason, maybe the manufacturer missed that, just email us at support at simplestories.com and we can email those to you. So um, let us know. They should be in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get going. If I look at my instructions, the first thing it's telling me is that I need to add this, uh, the orange strip and the green strip. So I punched some of those out already and I'm going to grab those. So I've got this fun plus pattern. That's going to go to the right of the pre-printed strip. Maybe I'll just move this other side out of the way for a second, and that will make it easier. It will give me more space to spread out. So I'm going to put this green one right here. Also, the pre-printed layers on there are also act as guides. So that way you have something to put something up against and then you still have that layered feel so when it gets in your sheet protector like if you feel it you're still going to feel that fun layering but you're also when you get in the sheet protector you're not even going to notice that some of those are pre-printed especially when the two strips on either side are um you know book ending it so it your eye just goes oh yeah those are all cut and added on there so we're going to add this orange one over to the left, and then we added this green one to the right, and now we have all of these fun patterns. Now the next thing we're going to do is we need this grid frame, and we're going to add a four by six photo to it. But I'm actually going to switch this up a little bit. As I was looking at this, I thought, okay, this is a nice big frame, and I'm going to punch it out so you can see the opening does fit a four by six photo. But because the frame is nice and thick, I can actually use it as a mat instead of a frame. And that's what I'm going to do today. So let me show you the difference. I printed out this photo of my daughter and her friends. They're just all sitting in the backyard on a four by six. So I can just add that behind the frame and I'm ready to go. But, and it looks awesome, right? But because that frame is so thick, if I want, I can actually print that photo bigger. And in this case, I wanted to do that because I wanted to see, you know, I have all these people in a group. So I'm going to print it larger and I'm actually going to add it to the front of the frame and just use that as a paper layer. So I'm going to get a bigger focal point just simply by changing up the design. So I wanted to show you that because that's a fun way to change things up if you want to. So I'll just add a little bit of adhesive there and I'm going to center my photo. Now this is a five by seven photo. I did trim it down slightly just so that all of the margins on all the edges looked 
really good. And then we will get that into place. So that's going to go. I'm just referring back to my sheet just to make sure I'm putting it in about the right place so that I have space for my other elements. It will go right there. Now, after I do that, I have a couple of um, flags and some decorating to do on that frame. And I can still do that even though I switched up the design. So I'm going to grab the two flag pieces. There's this pink one that has a beautiful lace pattern on it. And it's a tonal lace pattern. And then I've got this orange one that's going to be paired with it. And I'm just going to tuck those under there like that and add adhesive. Yes, that grid frame is so cute, Becky. You're right. It's just a fun pattern that just calls attention to that photo and just makes it nice and bright. So we'll add those two little flags there. And then that will repeat that orange color and bring the eye across. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the chipboard cluster to go in this upper corner. So I'll just pop that out. And again, if you, um, if a little, I'm going to try and show this to you close so you can see that sometimes there will be little connecting points. Do you see that right there? So if that bothers you, just scrape it with a nail file and it will be gone. So super, super easy. Now, if you've joined me the last couple of weeks, you know that my voice has, I got sick and I had a really crazy voice and I'm almost better, which is awesome. But as I start to talk, it starts to come back. It starts to get weak again. So I hope you'll bear with me if I get squeaky again. That's just because I'm still recovering from losing my voice. And um, that's just the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> All right. Oh, good. Andre is loving that trip with the frame, which is really fun. So now we're going to add in some more of these die cuts and I'm going to bring in the picture so you can see what I'm doing. There's this die cut here and then we've got a chipboard piece that says today and then another little die cut. So because I have the space along the bottom of this photo, right, it's just a coffee table. I don't care about the coffee table. I'm going to go ahead and just layer that right on top of the photo. And because I knew my design before I started, I could look for photos that would work and, and handle those additional embellishments. It's always fun to build your title on top of your layout or your photos. Sometimes you can print your journaling on there, even before you print out your photos, if you happen to print your photos at home. Um, another fun trick is just to, you know, layer a cluster over the top. Um, Maybe you have a journaling block just to make the most of the space on your page. So right there, I'm not even going to miss that because I've got the space along the bottom of that photo. Okay, so we're going to layer that there. And then I have this little die cut that's going to go under the left side. So I'm going to almost add them at the same time. And just make that look nice and full, nice and cute. And here we have our page so far. Okay, so let's keep going. Now the next thing I need is to build this little section down here. I have a strip of green that appears to go across both pages, so I need to get this little block. I'm gonna add a photo to that. There's a little cluster, and then I have a journaling block over to the left. I love this. The other reason I love these pages is because we always include a journaling block. I don't know about you, but I get going on my design and sometimes I forget to leave room for journaling. So this way, raise your hand if you've done it. You know you may have, right? <laughs> and you're like, oh darn, where am I gonna put this story? Well, if you have these page kits, it's all allocated for you. You have a place for your title. You have a place for your journaling. You don't even need to worry about it. So I'm gonna pop out that journaling block. Love the typography in this collection, super cute. It says, I can feel it, good things are just around the corner. And that's a fun one. So that goes with this memory perfect because you know these girls came to my house, they decorated my daughter's room before she came home and then just surprised her with this, a fun surprise party, which was so cute. In fact, the photo I'm gonna stick right here on this green block is of them getting started to decorate her room. So there's all her cute friends. And now I can just add adhesive to that. And it's going to fit perfectly right there because I knew exactly how big to print out my photos. 
So that four by three photo will go right there. And now I'm ready to add my other um, embellishments right here. So the next thing I need is uh, the peach die cut. We've got this cute peach. We've got the little, um, there's a little flower cluster that's gonna go with it. And then we've got a butterfly. So this says life is just peachy. And I see a couple little, you know, things that are sticking off there. So I'm just gonna scrape those off real quick. So I need that one. The other die cut I need is, um, let's see, it is the small pink floral cluster. So let's see, that's an orange one. That's a orange one. There's the small one. Okay, so that way, because I left them all together, I could find that really quickly and easily. So we'll go ahead and put this down. Okay, so Maria's asking, how do you get the white frame around your photos when you get them printed? So I'm going to show you this, and I'm going to show you on another um, photo. This is something I've showed before, so I didn't show it today, but this is how my photo prints out, and I just print them at home. Um, you can also do this on photos that you get printed elsewhere. However, it doesn't, it kind of leaves a purplish hue because the printing process is a little bit different. Because I'm using an inkjet printer, this will have uh, get taken off real easily. But all I do is I just take some fine grit sandpaper and I just put it down on a mat so I don't ruin my table. And then I just scrape the, the ink off the edges. It's something I've done for years and years just to kind of Instead of matting my photos with white cardstock, it's a lot quicker. So I like to do that. I just take some of the ink off and I like the distressed look that it gives. It just adds some character. So try it, give it a try and see if you like doing that too. Okay, so we've got our little peach. I think I'm actually gonna pop this one up. So I've got some foam tape here. And then the final piece I need is that chipboard pink butterfly. So I'm going to pull out the chipboard, find that pink butterfly. I'm going to pop that one up as well. And again, I'm just doing a quick scrape or two just because I want to get those little nodes off. And you can do this on all of your supplies. Sometimes all of our supplies have that, you know, because they have to keep, they have to stay connected in the sheet somehow. So they have to um, not fall all apart. So they do have those little connecting points sometimes. And you can just use a nail file to get that off really quickly. Awesome, yes, so Becky's saying you can order um, photos with a white frame as well, so yes. So that works great. Okay, so I'll just add that little butterfly right there. And you guys, I'm already done with the left page. Wasn't that quick and fast? Awesome, so now let's pull out our other sheet and let's get going on this side. Okay, so for this side, I'll bring back in my instructions. You can see that we have some pre-printed layers and that the black floral is on the right side. I need to add an orange strip next to the black floral. But before I do that, if I actually read my instructions, and this is where glancing at the instructions is helpful, it's asking me to put the green strip down first. And that's because the green strip is going to get tucked under that orange border strip. So we're going to find that green plus strip. And I still have my pages side by side because when I have an element like this that stretches across, I want to make sure that I match them up when I adhere it down. So let's go ahead and match those pages up. And even though my pages will have be a little bit apart in my book because I have a three green binder, it will still appear as though it's going all the way across. Okay, so now I can grab that other orange strip. And now I know that I'm gonna tuck that green right under there and I'm gonna get that fun layered feel. I can see a little piece that punched out weird, so I'm just gonna fix that. And now I can cover that up. My adhesive I went crazy with and it's poking out of the side, so I'm just trying to fix that a little bit. And there we go, okay. The next piece we need, or the next step is telling me to do, is to add my two photos down here. So we're going to work on this bottom section, and then we'll come up to this top section. So I have two more 4 by 3 photos, and I'm covering it up, all my photos up, <laughs> with my supplies as I'm working. 
And I'm going to put these in the order that they happened. So again, these are just photos of my daughter and her friends. They're opening presents and they're just having a lot of fun. So I'm going to look at my designs because I'm trying to remember. There are some um, little clusters that cover the photo. So I just want to look at which one I'm putting where to make sure that I won't cut cover anything in my photo. So I'll put this one here on this side. And if I wanted to add additional mats to this, you know, maybe I want more color. Maybe I want to add pink around these or something like that. I can totally bring those in and just add even more layers. But you have everything you need to um, scrapbook. So you don't have to if, if you don't want to. Okay, the next couple of pieces I'm going to look for is this floral piece. And I also have a tab piece. Both of those are chipboard. So I'm going to pull out my chipboard sheet. We'll go ahead and punch out this gorgeous flower. I love that it's got the little label on there because I can add the date to that with some stamps or some stickers or even just handwrite it on there. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down here in the lower corner. And you can see in the design that there was some space left on the green side. See right there? And that's so you have space for that little embellishment. Then we have the tab. So let's do that. This we can do that. We can add, write something in there, maybe um, her name or how old she is on this day. So that is going to look super cute right there. And I'm trying, I'm nudging it over so I don't cover her friend's face. Okay. The next thing I need to do is I have two vertical photos that are going to go right here. These are her cute friends posing out in the backyard. So I'm going to add that to this space right here. And the background has some printed lines on it, so I can actually use that to make sure my stuff is straight, which I love. There we go. And now I'm ready to build this little cluster up here. There's the orange flag, and then I'm going to add some items on top. So here's the little orange flag. I'll pop that out. And I love it because it's continuing this pattern over to this side of the page. So I'm going to just kind of dry fit that. And it's because it's kind of long, it might cover her friend's face. So I can either move it up to the top of the page or I can just trim it to match my photos. So that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm just going to trim it to work with my page. because I do not want to cover her cute friend's face. They're making goofy photos in this, or goofy smiles in this picture. <laughs> She's so funny, her friend at the top, she just turned around. She just thought, I'm not making a face. She just turned around. <laughs> I'm like, that's a good way to do it, <laughs> you know? Okay, so now we need um, the two butterflies, which I, they are on a die cut sheet, so I will grab those. Got this blue butterfly and I may adjust this a little bit because I trimmed that um, banner to not cover my um, pictures there so I need the two butterflies and then the last piece I need is this chipboard good times so I'm going to play with this a little bit just to change the um, design to fit my page so let's see I probably can do a little cluster like this and just layer it off to the side. So I'll layer that and then I will add the blue butterfly lower instead of higher. So we'll put this one here. It might need to go a little higher. We'll layer that one right there. And then this blue butterfly, I will just add some foam tape too, just to give it a little bit of dimension, just cause I love dimension. And oh, thanks, Tamara saying I'm fast. <laughs> well, you know what? It's because of these kits, I'm telling you. So there we go. We've got this first page all done. I've got my little butterflies all in there. And I'm going to move on to my second page. And if I can, if I have those extra pieces at the end, like I believe this rainbow is an extra piece. If I want, I can come back in and incorporate those in, right? Maybe I want to tuck them in somewhere else, maybe down here or something like that. So I will put those little pieces aside and then we will go ahead and move on to the second layout. I'll add my journaling later 
And then if I want to come back with those extra pieces, I can. So there's a look at that. Look at that. So there we go. All right, let's go ahead. Next page. So this next page is of my son. I'm going to, even though these are kind of girly pictures, I thought the, this would work really well for this memory. So I'll show you his pictures and you can see what we're going to do. So <laughs> this is, and you got a sneak peek of it earlier. I don't know if you can see what he's doing. I don't know if you can see a guess. See all those pink flamingos? All right. So one time in the dollar store, we found all of these pink flamingos these little plastic pink flamingos. So we bought as many as we could find and he used them to ask a, a girl to a dance. So that's what we did. <laughs> so I thought, you know what, this will be a really fun background for that page because it will bring out that pink. And even though these pictures aren't great, right? They were just taken on my cell phone. They were taken at night. They're kind of dark because of all these fun, bright colors. It's going to lift it. It's going to make it look fun and vibrant. So that's why I decided to go with those pictures. Okay, so here I have the picture of my layout. And the first thing I need to grab is the pink lace strip. So I'm actually gonna work on layering these two pieces right here together, the pink lace strip and the blue floral banner strip. So here's this one right here. And then the blue floral one is right here. So we can just go ahead and layer those up. On the instructions, it will tell me that the pink lace strip needs to go one and one fourth inches up from the bottom of the printed green pattern. So if you like to measure, do it. Um, I'm just going to guess. <laughs> so there we go with the pink lace strip. And now I'm going to add this blue one right on top. And if I look at the picture, it's not exactly center. So I'm going to offset it towards the top a little bit. Okay, the next thing I need are my two vertical photos and the mats to put my photos on. So here are my mats. And again, I can see where I was a little fast on punching those out. So I just need to tidy up the edges real quick. But here we have this fun orange color and then we have this fun golden yellow color. Sorry if that's loud. Okay, so because these are going to overlap, I know these are going to go on the other page. I want to decide, I'm looking at the, the design, and I can change it up, of course, but the yellow one is overlapped on the orange one. So let me look at my photos and see how I want to do that. Now, because he's, his body is kind of facing this way, I'm going to put that one on the right side. I think that makes the most sense. So I will do that, and I may change how these overlap one another just so I can see more of the poster that we made. Okay, I don't know about you, I gotta say this, but I get so excited when my family finds a reason to dive into my craft room. Of course, there's limited things that they can touch, right? But look how cute his poster turned out because he decided to use my cameo and my printer and he made these really cute letters and I'm like, yes, see, we need my crafting stuff. <laughs> It's multi-purpose. My husband will sometimes come in and use my tools, and he always says, I'm so glad you have these tools. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. Gives me reason to keep hoarding them, right? All right, so here we have these two photos, and we are going to um, put those like that. So tell me in the comments, what is the weirdest thing your family has done with your scrapbooking tools or your scrapbooking supplies? Have they done anything fun? that was out of the ordinary. My husband likes to use my crocodile to add uh, holes to his belt. So that's probably the weirdest thing that we've done <laughs> is punching through his belt. I don't know. I'll have to keep thinking. Okay. So after we've added our photos, we are ready to build this little cluster at the top. So I need the sun. I'm going to look for the hearts and then that, uh, I believe it's a chipboard piece. So we'll grab the sun. And that's going to go right here at the top of this photo. And because I have some space on that photo, I can overlap it. Then we have this little label that's the chipboard piece. Now, in the instructions, it will tell you if it's a chipboard piece. If it doesn't say if it's chipboard, then it's going to be a die cut. So we're going to overlap those. 
And then we're going to need a couple of the chipboard hearts. So it tells me I need a large blush one and a small blue one. So I can punch those out. Now, I think I placed my photos a little higher than the sample. So I may adjust this a little bit just to match what I did, which is just great. Let's see, Maria is saying the only thing, oh, <laughs> her request is do not touch my scissors. Yep, exactly. And Becky's making cards with her niece today. That's so fun. Do your family, does your family like to craft? My, my kids, they all, um, they kind of do bullet journaling where they journal and then they print off pictures and put them in their journal. They haven't quite got into the scrapbooking yet, but I'm hoping when they have their families that they will. You know, right now they just kind of keep it private in their journals, but I'm hoping they'll get into it later. Okay, so I switched up those hearts a little bit just to match mine. And now I'm going to work down here on the title. Now this title has this cute pink drink and some flowers. And so I'm actually decided to switch this up a little because the laugh and love didn't quite match my uh, memory. So I pulled out my, um, I pulled out my simple stories, color vibe foam letter stickers, and I made my own title. So I layered together the orange and pink letters and I have my own title that says, Let's Flamingo. And then I could add the pink drink in there, but I also used my Color Vibe cardstock to die cut the little flamingos. So I looked up the silhouette cut that he used on his poster, and I made little miniature versions of those so that they would match the memory. And so I'm going to put that there and my title here. Okay, so let's see. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so on that title, I just, I adhered the letters to the black Color Vibe cardstock, and then I just cut around them. So just to give them a bit of an outline so that they would stand out a little bit. The cutting's not perfect. Like if you look at it, it's pretty messy, but I don't, that doesn't bother me. I don't stress too much about if the edge is exactly perfect all the way around, because I just think it gives it character. <laughs> So I try my best to be straight, but it's not always straight, and that's okay with me. So we're going to put that little color vibe flamingo that I made right there. And then I'm going to add my title. Now, I won't take the time to unpeel all of these little foam squares right now because that would mean you would wait for a really long time. <laughs> so I will just come back and do those later, but I will do enough to get it stuck down. So, you know, like I mentioned before, use these kits as a starting point. You don't have to use them exactly as they are. So I changed it up to match my memory. So I do have some pieces still that I can add in. Like I have this orange floral, and I think that would look adorable next to that flamingo. So I'm going to punch that out. And I'm going to add that in. I could even still add the pink drink if I wanted. In fact, let's see what it looks like. It might be too, too big, but let's see. Yeah, I think I'll wait on that one. I'm just going to use that like to make a card or something. So I'll put the little floral there just like it is next to the pink drink. Okay. And then over on this side, there's a little speech bubble and a couple of hearts. And I can still do that. I can write some things on that speech bubble. So let me find that. It's right here. Let's see. It'd be cute if he was talking. So I don't know. Maybe I'll have to switch that up. I don't know. It looks cute there because you could say like day of the dance. I'm going to leave it there. I think that's cute. Even though it covers a couple of the flamingos, I love how the orange looks and how it fills that space. So right there, I'm going to write my date and who he asked to the dance. And then finally, I'm going to add in some of these chipboard hearts, just like it is on the layout. So again, I'm just switching it up to match my, my page and my memory by adding my own title. Okay, so that's the first page. And now I have a cut those other photos that I'm going to put on the second page. So we'll do that. In fact, I wonder if I put this little rainbow. 
I don't know. I might come back and add that in. Okay. So let's grab my other base sheet and I'll scoot this over to the side and we'll keep going. All right. So if we look at this one, we saw that there was the uh, layers that went across and this one is the same. It has layers that go across, but this time it's in the center because we have a, a four, four by four inch square items on there. We have two four inch square photos and then there's these two four inch blocks. So the blo the strips that go underneath are actually anchoring those in the center. So I need this light blue one. I'll go and add, I think that's the center. I may have to adjust that once I start putting my photos down, but we'll just go ahead and see what happens. Oh, thank you. Valerie's saying that she likes how I switched up my layout. Yeah, I like to do that. And so that's what we need to do, right? We want it to match our memories. So don't be afraid to do that. Okay, so now I have these two photos and I need square photos. So I'm gonna grab my crops. These are our photo crops. I don't know if you've seen these, but these are awesome to take to crops, but they're also, because they're portable, right? But they, I also keep a set on my desk. And the reason is they help me to uh, crop photos down to the exact size I need. Now, somebody might just say, well, just stick that in your trimmer and trim it to four, four inches, because it's already four inches high. Well, I want to see where my subject is centered the best. And so that's why I like using the photo crops instead of my trimmer in this instance, because I can, instead of putting it in my trimmer 3000 times and trying to center my uh, subject, I can just put the photo crop over it like this, grab my scissors. I know exactly what it's going to look like because of that translucent plastic. And then I just hold it in place with my thumb. And then I just cut along the edge of that template. It's a nice thick template. So my scissors aren't gonna nick it or go through it. And then I know that that is exactly four inches and that my subject is already centered. So like I showed you before, we're gonna sand the edges just to give it a little bit of a white edge. Again, you could put this on white cardstock if you wanted or even color cardstock if you wanted to mat it. So I just do a quick sand and I think I might put that one at the bottom. So now I'm going to trim this one. Now I was hesitant at first, like, well, if I trim this, I'm gonna trim off the poster, but because I have a picture of the poster on the other page, I'm not gonna worry about it. The reason I want this picture is because I just love how he's concentrating on putting this on the poster. I think his face and his, you know, just the vibe that he has is so cute because he wants this poster to look the very best that it can when he asks this girl to the dance. And so that is why I'm okay cropping off that poster is because the focus of this photo for me is his, his concentration on this poster. So we've got that all trimmed. I can just sand the edges. Sorry, I'm kind of making a mess here. And then we're ready to keep going. Okay, there we go. So I think I'm gonna add that one to the top and this one to the bottom because it's dark and heavy. So it kind of anchors the page. But before I adhere them down, I'm gonna punch out the other two items and just make sure that everything's nice and centered how I want it to look. And then I can get everything in its right spot. So I do, I have some extra pieces on this sheet as well that I could add in. So I've got this little label that I'll tuck up here. Maybe I'll come back and add those, this cute little plant. I'm not sure if that goes in or not. And then this little layered piece. And now I can just throw away that backing. Okay, so let's look at how this centers out. And that is about right. So I'm gonna go ahead and add all of these on. How's everyone doing? Does any, do any of you have this kit? Are you working on it with me today? Oh, Pam, thank you. Pam is saying very nice layout. Thank you so much, Pam. 
So fun fact, I actually designed these kits. I designed the page kits and the card kits. It's part of my job and I love doing it. I love thinking about, um, okay, how can, I wanna make sure, you know, someone can, everybody can use this in some way, but that it's general enough that you can switch it up and make it match your project. Okay, so I have a place to journal. I could write about how he went into my scrapbook room and picked out some things to put on this project, but I still have a place. Oh, you know what? I do use the rainbow. I'm glad I didn't stick it down. So here we go. We're gonna put this on. So let's look at this. Down here in the corner, we have the right now, the plant and a little pink. So let's do that one. I think I'm going out of order, but that's okay. So we'll add this little plant right here. We need the little, a small pink floral, it looks like. It might be the orange floral. Let's see, did I lose a piece? I may have put it on the other page on accident. So we'll use this one. I think I did. Okay. So we'll add the right now. Right here. And then I'll add this under this little edge. So there we have that one. Then we need the rainbow. There's a couple of phrases and a heart. So I'm glad I did wait on the rainbow. <laughs> Okay, so that goes right here. Has these two little phrases popped over it. That layer together, my ice cream fell out. So we'll add those. Let's see, it says best day ever, which it was. Now these two dated for a long time. So they had a lot of fun dances together. Okay, so I'll add those there, and then it's telling me I need a heart, so we're gonna add that to the right here. Pam is saying she has a hard time using pink for her son. Yes, I get it, sometimes I do too. I think because he's doing the pink flamingos, I was okay with it. I knew he wouldn't bother, it wouldn't bother him, but um, there you go. Okay, so over here we have a big floral cluster that's tucked behind there, and then two chipboard hearts. So let's grab that floral. That's just gonna connect those two items and just add a pop of bright color right there. And then the two hearts, got one down here, one right there. So lots of cute little sprinkly hearts. If I wanted, I could add um, glitter to these to make them sparkly. I could add um, gems. I could add, you know, like uh, the dimensional, like a glossy accents if I want them to be shiny. I should have probably scraped those off. That's okay. Okay, and then the last thing I have is that the ice cream is supposed to go right here on this day in the life with the two hearts. Now, if I had additional journaling, I would use, I could use that spot as journaling, but just like I made a little flamingo over here, I actually made a second one to go right here. I just thought that would be kind of fun to have the flamingos on both sides. So I will use that ice cream and the pink drink for a card. Or something else but I'm gonna use that flamingo that I made from the color vibe cardstock in my silhouette machine and then I can add these two hearts up here like that and I might switch those just cuz the pink next to that flamingo now I forgot to do something on the other side did you catch it I wonder if you caught it because I wasn't reading my instructions. <laughs> so we're gonna go back and do it. Let's see if anyone caught it, if anyone's gonna make a comment. Okay, so there's my two page layout. And the thing I forgot to add on this other page, if you look at the picture, is there's three journaling strips right down there. 
so I have those right here on my die cut sheets. And I like that they add that pop of white down there. I might, because I switch things up, I might be able to only be able to fit two. Yeah, I might only be able to fit two, but I could use the other one. I think I adhered this one too low, this yellow photo. It should have been a little higher, but I could put that up there if I wanted, or I could just have it go low. I think I'll leave it to two though, since I have all this space over here. Okay, so I'm gonna add those on and then we will be set. Does anyone have any questions? Now our page kits, we have lots and lots of designs and I'm gonna show you on our website where they are so that you can see all the designs we have in case you want to go see if your local scrapbook store has them or if you don't have them. If you don't have a local scrapbook store, if you want to see the designs we have so that you could search for them online. We also sell some of them in our shop. So let's just take a closer look at this one more time. There's my title I made with the, the Color Vibe Foam stickers. I just adhered them to black cardstock and cut around them. And then I made my own flamingos using the Color Vibe cardstock just so it would match my memory. And look how cute that pink, that pink matches the pink perfectly because it matches the um, all of our simple stories. Okay, so there's my first page. So let's switch over to the website real quick, just so you can see on our website where these are. So at the top of our page, there's this collections tab and I'm kind of circling around it with my arrow. So if you click on that, I'm going to back out so you can see where it is. There will be a page that shows kind of all these different categories that you can go into. So right here, it will show you the simple pages page kits. So if you click on there, it will take you into all of the page kits that we have made. And so these three at the top are going to be shipping to stores in about a week or two, but you have all of these other ones that are available now. So you can find these in your local scrapbook store or your favorite online retailer. And we have lots of themes. We have lots of different color styles. And so you can use these for anything. And remember, just like we did today, if the title doesn't match, you can switch it up to match your memory. So don't forget that you can do that. Okay, I'm watching for any questions as I turn back to our other camera. And I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed watching these get, come together. They come together super fast. We did two double page layouts in less than an hour. And I yapped a lot at the top <laughs> at the beginning. So we did those really fast. So these are again, are, if you have a crop coming up, take these to the crop because you could just plug your photos in. You could even, you don't even have to write your journaling, right? You can, you have a space for the journaling. You just take your pages home when you're, it's quiet and you can sit there and write your journaling. And they're really fun that way. They're great. Like if you have a friend who is curious about scrapbooking, but they feel overwhelmed, right? They look at that pile of products and they don't know where to start. They feel they feel like, well, I don't know where to put the photos. I don't know how to layer the papers. We'll give them a few of these kits and they can try them out. And they can, as they work with them, they'll see, oh, okay, I see how they're adding strips here. And I see how they're matting the photos here. And that helps them to learn more about scrapbooking. They're great for kids. If you wanna get your kids involved, there's so many uses for them. I know people take them with them traveling so that they can um, use them that way as well. Okay, so I'm not seeing any questions pop up, which is great. That means you're crafting and having fun, which I love. Thank you so much for joining me. Speaking of crops, I want to remind you that we have we have a retreat that we're doing as Simple Stories this year. So in September in Layton, Utah, we are having a three-day event, and you've got to come. We've so almost sold out, but we still have a few tickets left. We're, we're just trying to sell out those last few tickets, so they're going to go. So if you want to come, come and do it. I'm going to be teaching a class. We have Becky Adams from our design team teaching a class. We have Andrea Lake teaching a class. Amber Crowell is the owner and creative mind behind all of your favorite Simple Stories scrapbooking. She's teaching a class. Sue Kendall also works in-house. She is amazing. She designs classes 
classes for our retailers. She is going to teach a class. And then we have Jody Sanford, who's going to be doing some home decor with us. And she is amazing. She's from Foundations Decor, if you're familiar with that company. So come hang out with us. We would love to be with you. Now, our next live is going to be next Friday, every Friday at two o'clock. So be sure to come by and hang out with us. Again, we're going to be working with our brand new collections. We've got the Full Bloom, the Boho Baby, and Indigo Garden. So over the next several weeks, we'll be playing with those fun new collections and showing you what's going on. As always, check out our blog. Our amazing design team is constantly making things to inspire you, and they do a fantastic job. Anyway, it's been wonderful being here with you. I hope you have an awesome weekend and that we really appreciate your support. I have fun doing this every Friday, and I hope you do too. All right, have a great one. We'll see you next time.